tensile strength line, which is not just a straight line, but which is an inclined line. Let me draw it here as points, which is called the modified Griffith criterion. And you can find that one in, in Jagger's book. Uh, same as the other lines, it's just an equation. But, but conceptually, it's important because it tells me how far I can go to the left with some of the stresses uh, under tension. Uh, all right. So um, we know we can capture now shear failure. We can capture tensile failure. There is one more failure that we, we need to take into account. And that's going to be compression. But that one is not very simple. Uh, and we're going to see the equations in order to deal with that one. But just let me anticipate what we're going to see later on. If you were to have pure compression, what will be your J2? Isotropic compression, J2 will be zero, right? But if you compress, especially rock, if you compress it too much, there's going to be a point in which you're going to start failing some uh, grains inside the rock, some pores are going to start to collapse. So there is a limit for that. It's, it's not that, that you're going to run into, into a fracture. There could be a fracture at the grain scale. But uh, it's, it's not that uh, there's going to be a collapse or something, because you're just compressing, right? It's, everything is under equilibrium. So usually for that, this point over here, instead of measuring a, a peak stress, we will measure, imagine that we're increasing I1, and we measure volumetric strain. In this case, we will increase the compression till a point that we start to see that it deviates. Uh, and probably it may be like that. But that's what we call a yield stress. Uh, actually, let me see. No, it's get, there, there is getting stronger. I want to make the opposite effect. Uh, so, in this case, just by increasing a little bit the compression, you get into huge volumetric strains. So, this is going to be a yield stress. And that point is going to be that one. So, when you get to this point in which, by increasing it a little bit, your uh, compression stress, and also if you were to unload it, you will have an irrecoverable volumetric strain. This is that point. If you don't have a pure compression isotropic stress, you will see that the mean stress needed to produce the same is actually going to be lower. So that point is pure isotropic compression, if you were to have some help from shear stresses, you will find that that limit moves to the left, and this is what is called shear enhanced compaction. And now, we have all the boundaries that limit the possible stress in which we can get in a given uh, material. Tension, shear, compression. OK? So uh, I uploaded the notes about deviated wall bores. So you should be able to, to solve that one. Uh, about the calculation of the, the breakout angle, I, I do something very, you, you may want to do it a little bit more elegantly, but I, I do something just very rough. Usually what I do is I would 
uh, calculate stresses at 360 points around the wellbore. And I will check for every single point with the if condition, if it's beyond or not the failure limit. And if it tells me uh, these points are beyond the failure limit, then the number of points be beyond the failure limit divided by 2, if I have 360 points, that's going to give you the breakout angle, right? So this is going to be the breakout angle. If you want to do more precisely, you can do a, a function that uh, iterates to find this point over here and measure the angle, but that's, that's up to you. It's not going to be a super major improvement of, uh, of the computation. All right, guys. I'll see you.